Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. So in style reboot number three, we're gonna get to some real concrete tips um, to help you just build your um, foundation, your wardrobe foundation. And these are styling basics. So before we dive into anything else, closet editing, wardrobe basics, body types, any of that, I think it's important to understand these fundamental styling basics. It's information we should all have. It's a, a tool that we should all have in our toolbox. So I thought that was a great, great place to start. The first style basic I wanna talk about is your trouser hemline. If you guys have been a long time subscriber, I've actually done a full video on the trouser hemline. I'll put a link to that below. But essentially, with your regular trousers, I'm not talking about ankle trousers, the one that are more tailored towards your ankle, but a traditional trouser, that is more of a wider leg, you want that trouser to really almost dust the floor. So it should be one half to three quarters of an inch off the ground, that's this much, guys. Your shoe is just peeping out, so the toe of your shoe is just peeping out a little bit. That is gonna create the most professional, polished, elongating, slimming look. When you get that proportion off with your regular trousers, it throws off the whole look. I've seen it over and over and over and over again. And when I've done presentations in a corporate environment, I look around the room and I'm trying to find somebody that's got it right and it's really hard to find. There are a lot of offenders of this. And part of the issue is, you may have a pair of pants that you love, but you wanna wear different shoes with it, and certain shoes may not be the right height for the length of the pant, um, so you wear them anyway. Well, what you need to do is when you find a pair of trousers you love, you get two pairs. You get one for your favorite pair of pumps or heels, and then you get the, um, the other pair for your flats, your loafers, or a lower heeled shoe. So um, the proportion of that pant is, is very important, and it's seemingly small detail, but it has big impact on your overall look. So that is style basic number one to consider. Doesn't pertain to the ankle trousers though, remember, or the crop trousers. There's this whole crop trouser phenomenon going on and certainly that can be a really cool look when you do that culotte or that crop trouser with a tall boot or a high booty, mid-calf booty. But in terms of traditional trousers, that's where you want your hemline to be. The next style basic is about your skirt in a professional setting. Your skirts and your dresses when you're casual out and about on the weekends or weekdays, that's completely your personal preference, what length hemline you wanna wear. But in a professional setting, I would strongly suggest that you do something in the knee zone. That's a couple inches above the center of the knee or a couple inches below. That's gonna keep you looking the most polished and the most professional. And I think that's kind of your fail safe hemline length for the dress or the skirt. Um, um, you know, the blazer is an important key piece in your wardrobe, and I'll talk about more about wardrobe basics coming up, and certainly the blazer is one of them. But when you're looking for a great blazer, one that you can wear all the time, the fit of the blazer is really important, and the first thing that needs to fit properly are the shoulders. And, you know, if you find that the blazer, um, this, the seam is kind of going on the outside of your shoulder, then you probably need to look at petite sizing or you're gonna have to go, go to the tailor and get your blazers tailored. But the shoulders have to fit well, and that's really the first, first thing to look for is a good fitting shoulder and shoulder seam. And the next thing you wanna look for, I'd say when in doubt, get a one button blazer. Make sure it sort of smooths over the, the um, curves of your body or follows the natural curves of your body. So it's tailored and it's not gathering or puckering or gaping or ruching in any part of the torso. It should just really flow over your curves of your body. And then the length of the blazer, I'd say the best fail safe length is hip bone length. So find out, find where your hip bone is and that's where the hemline of the blazer should fall. If it's a three quarter sleeve blazer, you got lots of wiggle room there. Just do keep in mind that where that sleeve falls is where the eye will go. But with a full length sleeve, your sleeve length should be somewhere between just below the wrist bone and above the first joint on your thumb. So right in here somewhere is a good sleeve length. Another styling basic that's worth mentioning because a lot of times we're busy and we're, we're pressed for time and we're running out the door is you wanna make sure you look at every angle of your outfit. A lot of times we forget about what's in the back and that can lead to some style 
disasters, right? So you want to make sure that if you are wearing a fitted pant or a light pant that your underwear doesn't show through, that you don't have the visible panty lines or the VPLs, um, that you're wearing a seamless underwear, you're wearing an underwear that's nude or an appropriate color for the pants that you're wearing. You want it to look you know, very um, streamlined and you don't want to be able to see those panties. I think I've just found a great pair of underwear. You know, Hanky Panky is one of the lines that women love for seamless underwear and for underwear that doesn't show through pants, but they're thongs and a lot of us don't want to wear thongs, myself included. So I am on the hunt for the perfect pair of undies to wear under those more fitted pants. But you just want to make sure that you're kind of checking out the rear view before you leave the house and make sure that's all in check. I've talked about this before, but that is one of those styling basics that's just worth repeating. The next basic I want to mention are accessories. I think accessories are vitally important to your look. When you do have basics and you're wearing a basic outfit, like let's say you're wearing jeans and a, a black turtleneck, you add a great necklace, you add a great scarf, you add a great waist belt, you add a great handbag. Just that one piece, it doesn't even have to be more than one, that one piece can completely elevate your otherwise very simple, very basic look. So accessories are essential in any great wardrobe and I think they are also very impactful. In another video, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about accessories and how you can use them, but it's just something I thought was worth mentioning in this first style basic video, accessories being incredibly important to your wardrobe. You know, I get a lot of questions about colors and prints and how do I incorporate color into my wardrobe and how do I incorporate prints into my wardrobe. I usually say it depends on where you are in your style journey. So if you're just like very new to color and very new to prints, what I would say to clients or what I would say in a presentation is wear one color and keep everything else neutral or wear one print and keep everything else neutral. So you just kind of want to try it starting out. You, you're a little bit out of your comfort zone wearing color or wearing prints. You do one, keep everything else quiet and neutral. So for example, you might do a handbag that's in a bright bold color and then you're wearing black and blue, you know, blue jeans and a black turtleneck or you're wearing a black suit and you got a gold bag or you've got a leopard print bag and you're wearing all black black dress or something. So you just pick that one piece, keep everything else neutral and quiet and that's an easy way to transition into both bold colors and bold prints. The next style basic I want to talk about is volume proportion and I have I would say in most cases you want to be mindful of volume proportion. I have definitely seen bloggers who wear volume all over and look amazing. Like I said to you in the last video, I'm just giving you guides and things that could help you on your way if you're unsure. But if you're rocking the oversized volume, um, the oversized silhouettes all over and you're loving it, great, stay with that. But in general, I think that you should think about your outfit in terms of proportion. So, for example, if you're wearing an oversized sweater, like an oversized dolman sleeve sweater, then you want to wear a more slender taper pant on the bottom or a more skinny jean um, to offset the volume of the top. So in contrast, if you're doing the wide leg trouser, like these white leg, wide leg, white, pants, then you want to do something more tailored on the top like a turtleneck or some, a, a tighter fitting, more tailored sweater. So that's how um, I would say most people dress on a day-to-day -day basis. They're considering that style proportion and I think it's just a good rule of thumb. Do you have to always adhere to that? No, absolutely not. Again, this is a guideline, but I do think it's a good rule of thumb in terms of putting your best foot forward in the style department. Okay. And then the last style basic I wanted to talk about is the one skin rule. Again, you don't have to adhere to this. Um, this is something I've probably lived by my whole life, um, maybe before I even identified what I was doing. But basically what it means is if you're gonna show a lot of skin up here, you're doing strapless, you're doing, a, you know, the girls are out, um, you keep everything covered on the bottom. And vice versa, if you're gonna wear a mini skirt or a shorter dress and the legs are out, then you keep this part pretty much covered up, okay? From the classy scale, when you adhere to the one skin rule, you're gonna be more over here toward the 10 on the classy scale versus down here at one. So um, I think the one skin rule is a really great principle for women of all ages. It's certainly a great principle for women as we get a little bit older 
And I just think in general, it's a great rule of thumb um, to adhere to in terms of looking sophisticated, chic, elegant, classy, and ladylike. Um, you know, there's times where you just wanna, you know, maybe you're on a date with your husband and you're really pulling out all the stops more for him than you, or maybe it's more for you than him, I don't know. And certainly that may make you feel comfortable and sexy and great to let it all hang out, have at it. And culturally, I think it's a little bit different for different cultures. Um, so maybe in your culture, it's more acceptable to show more skin and you're very comfortable with that, have at it. This is just a general rule of thumb that I follow that I think is very helpful. And if you're not sure, I think it can be a very helpful rule of thumb for you too. So those are some styling basics I just wanted to go over in this Style Reboot series, number three. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can just comment below. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'm gonna be rolling one of these out a week. I hope you'll stay with me and subscribe and watch the series. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see coming up. Don't forget about the blog because I do put different stuff over on busbystyle.com as well. If you haven't subscribed to my newsletter yet, you may want to subscribe to the weekly newsletter. And that's it guys. I will see you next time. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.